Mesdames, Messieurs, chers et chers collègues, très heureux de, de, de vous accueillir pour cette nouvelle cérémonie de, de remise donc, des insignes de docteur Honoris Causa. Aujourd'hui, à un collègue qui n'est pas issu du, du domaine de la santé, puisque, chers collègues, vous êtes issu des sciences humaines, mais qui incarne donc un partenariat fort entre votre établissement et l'Université de Montpellier. Permettez-moi, à travers ces quelques mots, comme je l'ai fait hier pour ceux qui étaient déjà présents, de rappeler la signification du doctorat honoris causa. Un titre qui est décerné sur le fondement d'un décret Certains trouveront anciens, d'autres récents. C'est sûr, quand on compare aux 800 ans de l'université de médecine, c'est très récent, puisque c'est un décret de 1918 qui donne aux établissements d'enseignement supérieur la possibilité de délivrer ce titre. Mais formellement, les doctorats honoris causa sont beaucoup plus anciens. Et on en trouve trace dès le XVIIe siècle. Il s'agit ainsi, par l'attribution de ce titre docteur honoris causa, eh bien, de, reconnaître, de reconnaître les mérites éminents de collègues. Mérites éminents de collègues pour la science, pour les sciences, quel que soit leur domaine d'application, puisque le décret de 1918 évoque certes les sciences techniques, mais évoque également, par exemple, les arts. Et au-delà des mérites éminents, eh bien, tant à valoriser des parcours, des parcours qui mettent en avant des relations avec soit l'université qui attribue le titre, soit la République, c'est-à-dire l'État français. Or, vous, cher professeur Coupé, eh bien, il y a, je dirais, différentes raisons de vous accorder ce titre de docteur honoris causa. La raison la plus évidente, qui peut-être aussi est une raison d'actualité, c'est que vous avez accepté de présider notre Conseil international, ce qu'on appelle le MIAB, le Montpellier International Advisory Board, qui est un conseil donc qui vise à nous accompagner, qui s'est réuni cet après-midi, et je remercie François Pierrot d'avoir accepté de faire la présidence de séance de ce conseil, pour nous accompagner dans les prochains enjeux, les prochains chantiers, les prochaines échéances de l'université. Aujourd'hui, ce conseil est positionné au sein de la fondation qui porte le projet Montpellier Université Excellence. Demain, il sera positionné au sein de l'université qui va connaître dans les prochaines semaines une évolution statutaire. Donc merci pour votre implication. Merci d'être à nos côtés et de nous accompagner dans cette évolution. Vous me permettrez de dire, professeur Coupé, qu'il y a une seconde raison qui justifie aussi l'attribution de ce doctorat honoris causa, c'est que vous êtes le parfait ambassadeur de l'Université de Montpellier. Parfait ambassadeur de l'Université de Montpellier, pourquoi je dis cela mais euh, il y a eu des captures d'écran, des captures de, de, de vidéos qui nous ont permis de voir avec quelle force vous avez défendu l'université de Montpellier lorsque le président Macron euh, est venu à Pretoria, où vous lui avez dit que finalement ce qui avait été fait en France, ce qui avait été fait à Montpellier à travers le projet Montpellier Université Excellence et les appels à projets au titre des programmes d'investissement d'avenir, était une réussite et un succès. Finalement, des fois, on dit « nul n'est prophète en son pays ». Vous avez réussi à faire comprendre au président de la République française, lors de son déplacement en Afrique du Sud, l'intérêt qu'il avait à soutenir Montpellier et la recherche sur ce territoire. Gageons que demain, dans le cadre du nouveau sommet Afrique-France, ses conseillers lui rappellent l'intérêt, effectivement, de venir visiter donc euh, le corner ou les ateliers donc, sur l'enseignement supérieur, la recherche et l'innovation. Donc finalement, double raison. Double raison, euh, d'une part, cette logique de nous accompagner, d'autre part, cette logique de nous défendre. 
Et puis, c'est également euh, l'occasion euh, de mettre euh, à l'honneur l'Université de Pretoria et les fonctions que vous exercez. L'Université de Pretoria, qui a une visibilité internationale, une visibilité maintes fois affirmée, une des meilleures universités du continent africain, une université avec laquelle nous avons, nous l'espérons, un destin commun, ou du moins des partenariats à développer progressivement, puisque c'est une université pluridisciplinaire comme la nôtre. Je pense que les liens forts que nous pourrions constituer entre l'Université de Montpellier et l'Université de Pretoria eh bien, seraient donc de nature à faire encore mieux vivre le projet que nous avons sur Montpellier d'être une porte, un portail, un hub. Patrick Caron dirait le projet Nextus, donc pour faire en sorte que sur Montpellier, il y ait des relations pérennes avec des établissements d'enseignement supérieur du continent africain. À des faits, le projet de l'Université Montpellier est très simple. Les sciences du vivant et de l'environnement tournées vers les pays du Sud. Et finalement, Pretoria est dans la ligne directe donc, de Montpellier. Et donc, à travers cette reconnaissance, j'espère, chers collègues, que cela contribuera à valoriser nos relations. Ce n'est pas le premier doctorat honoris causa que vous recevez, puisque vous avez été déjà fait doctorat honoris causa à l'Université du Michigan, me semble-t-il. Donc, c'est également une seconde reconnaissance pour votre implication dans des universités internationales. Alors, comme je l'ai dit également hier, le doctorat honoris causa, cher professeur Coupé, n'attribue pas d'émolument ou de rétribution particulière, hélas. Mais cela fait de vous un ambassadeur de l'université, mais vous l'êtes déjà, ambassadeur ou défenseur de l'université. Et cela fait également de vous un docteur de l'université, et donc l'université de Montpellier, c'est aujourd'hui également la vôtre. Vous êtes un des nôtres, un de cette université qui est faite à travers sa faculté de médecine et ses 800 ans d'existence. Une université qui a une ambition, une ambition que je suis sûr vous défendrez. Et donc c'est avec beaucoup d'honneur que vous nous faites d'avoir accepté donc cette reconnaissance et ce titre de docteur honoris causa. Un grand merci, chers collègues, un grand merci pour votre implication, un grand merci pour travailler à nos côtés. Et j'espère, comme j'ai déjà dit, eh bien que nous pourrons, dans les années à venir, contribuer à ce beau partenariat, contribuer à développer ce, ce beau partenariat. C'est une attente forte des communautés scientifiques montpelliéraines. J'ose espérer que cette attente est également partagée par d'autres communautés scientifiques. Un grand merci à vous et toutes mes félicitations. Monsieur le doyen. En tant que hôte de ces lieux. Tout à fait. Donc, euh, je vais dire, messieurs les présidents d'université, messieurs les vice-présidents, chers collègues, je vais être très court. Le premier mot pour euh, vous souhaiter une nouvelle fois, j'allais dire, once again, la bienvenue dans cet euh, établissement, dans cette euh, faculté de médecine qui, comme l'a dit le président Auger, a célébré au cours, on va dire, des 18 derniers mois, épidémie oblige, euh, la création en 1220. Merci d'être présent au sein de ce bâtiment. C'est un grand honneur de vous recevoir pour cette distinction remarquable. Je voulais, au-delà, dire que la médecine est certes une discipline de santé. Pour reprendre une expression, la maladie est individuelle, la santé est collective et publique. Mais au-delà de dire que dans cette médecine extrêmement technologique, extrêmement technique, l'importance des sciences humaines, vous avez d'ailleurs ici localisé le département des sciences humaines de la faculté de médecine. Et c'est dire l'importance des collaborations, des éclairages hautement enrichissants 
Et à ce titre, véritablement, vous souhaitez une deuxième fois bienvenue dans cette maison qui est donc par définition la vôtre en raison de cette distinction, mais en dehors de l'importance capitale des sciences humaines dans les sciences médicales. Au-delà de ça, et pour conclure, en effet, il y a la célébration de 800 ans. Et la doctrine de cette maison est autrefois de Cos, de l'île de Cos, à ce jour, Hippocrate est de Montpellier maintenant. Et donc, quelque part, la, cette maison a eu comme fil rouge pendant 800 ans la, les principes, les préceptes de la médecine hippocratique. Et la médecine hippocratique place l'homme au centre du dispositif et dit de façon, mais je le résume très rapidement, l'homme doit surmonter sa maladie, ce n'est pas le médecin qui l'aide, c'est l'homme et son environnement et tout l'environnement et la dimension humaine qui l'entoure qui permet en effet de surmonter cette partie de maladie qui est individuelle et à l'étage public, la, améliorer la santé. Voilà, c'est dans cette droite ligne de ces 800 ans d'avoir le plaisir de vous recevoir pour la réception de cette distinction dans tout ce contexte médical, sciences humaines, tradition hippocratique, 800 ans. Merci pour votre présence. Félicitations au nom de la faculté pour votre distinction. Très belle cérémonie. Merci. Merci, merci, monsieur le doyen. Alors, selon la tradition, dans une cérémonie doctorat honoris causa, il y a un parrain. Le parrain prononce l'éloge du récipiendaire. Donc, je vais laisser la parole à Patrick Caron pour prononcer cet éloge. Et ensuite, chers collègues, une fois que vous serez officiellement docteur de l'Université de Montpellier, vous aurez libre propos pour évoquer ce que vous souhaitez, puisque par principe, c'est un libre propos. Je voudrais, avant de, de céder la parole, revenir sur un point. Je n'ai pas commencé en disant, mesdames et messieurs, en vous citant toutes et tous, je voudrais saluer tout particulièrement la présence de madame la, la PDG du CIRA, de, de l'IRD, et la présence de monsieur le PDG honoraire donc, du, du CIRA, de Valérie Michel, merci de, de votre présence, qui montre combien euh, les organismes et l'université de Montpellier eh bien, travaillent ensemble pour, pour le destin de ce site. Merci à vous. Monsieur le parrain, c'est la forme est consacrée. Le Bonjour. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Doyen, Mesdames, Messieurs les, les Vice-présidents, Madame la PDG, Madame la PDG, Monsieur le PDG honoraire, chers amis d'Afrique du Sud et d'Afrique australe, chers collègues, euh, je vais m'exprimer en, en anglais euh, pour un contact direct avec. Euh, le, le, le professeur Coupé. Et pour prononcer euh, l'éloge, donc, uh, to pronounce the tribute, and I'd like to introduce professeur Tawana Coupé on the occasion. I'd like to present, introduce professeur Tawana Coupé on the occasion of his receiving of a doctor honoris causa from the University of Montpellier. This allocution will be brief, although you all know that I could speak for hours and hours. And the life and the engagement of Professor Tawana Coupe would deserve it. Professor Tawana Coupe was appointed as the Vice Chancellor and the Principal of the University of Pretoria in South Africa in January 2019 where he is spearheading the provision and quality education to more than 53,000 students, inspiring them to help solve Africans most complex problems and be leaders in a global society. 
Let me inform you that in South Africa, the Chancellor of the University is a local political leadership, while the Vice Chancellor is from academic community. Before taking up this role, Professor Coupe served as the vice principal of the University of Witzwatersrand, Witz, called Witz, which is a huge university as well, a large university in the province of Gauteng in South Africa, where he was responsible for the daily running of the university and the coordination of operations across all executive portfolio. Professor Scoupe career further includes a six-year stint from 2007 to 2012 as Executive Dean of the Witz Faculty of Humanities after serving as the head of the then Witz Schools of Literature and Language Studies and as founding head of the Media Studies Department. Early on his career, he also lectures at Rhodes University and worked in various ac academic capacities at the University of Zimbabwe, including as chairperson of the Department of English, Media and Communication Studies. Professor Coupe holds a master's degree in English from the University of Zimbabwe, if I'm not wrong, as well as a, a PhD in Media Study from the University of Oslo in Norway. In December 2019, Professor Coupe, as already said, was awarded as an honorary doctorate degree in humanities in Michigan State University. Prof. Coupe has a distinguished publication record, having authored many journal articles as well as books and book chapters in his main disciplines, media studies. He co-edited the seminal book Broadcasting Policy and Regulation in Africa and is the chairperson of the Board of Media Monitoring Africa, an entity dedicated to media accountability. It also promotes the role of the media as an institution integral to sustaining democracy. And you begin to have words which do matter, not only in South Africa but in, in the world democracy and accountability. He's also chairman of the board of Amabungai, the Center for Investigative Journalism, that is a leader in exposing corruption in South Africa. Corruption, democracy, accountability. Prof. Coupe played a key role in the establishment of innovative initiatives at WITS. As founding director of the Africa Center for the Study of the United States, he led the establishment of this transdisciplinary center focusing on critically analyzing the U.S. as a nation and as a society. The center has attracted major academic and funding interest from leading U.S. and African universities, foundations, and private corporations. Other notable initiatives include the Witz Arts and Literature Experience and interdisciplinary platforms to showcase the university's unique achievements in primarily the creative arts and literature, as well as the establishment of a fully fledged media studies program, now one of the largest departments in the Faculty of Humanities. You can observe how wide is the scope of his activity. The footprint of Professor Coupe's influence has brought him significant international recognition. And as Vice Chancellor of the University of Pretoria, he is acclaimed for his dedication to capacity building partnerships across the African continent. And this is of particular importance at the moment where we celebrate Africa through the new Africa France Summit that are Africa-based, Africa-owned, but globally enabled and embedded. And this is quite a symbol for us to honor Professor Coupe now, this week, that we have the summit. He has achieved this through the, his leadership role in multiple networks, alliance, partnerships, and forums briefly outlined. Professor Coupe is a board member of the African Research Universities. So Pan-Africa. 
which group 17 in research intensive universities across Africa, dedicating to raising research quality and impact, research capacity development, and contributing to the creation of knowledge-driven sustainable development agendas. He is chair for Africa and co-chair of the Australia Africa Universities Network. And I hope this will become as well for European African networks in the future. Uh, this is a dream. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, for raising quality and impact, research capacity development, and contributing to the creation of knowledge-driven sustainable development agendas. He is the chair for Africa. Oh, sorry. I already said it. And the chair for... Africa and Australia uh, Universities Network. is the chair of the Michigan State University-led Alliance for African Partnerships, where the University of Pretoria is the only university member from South Africa. The, this uh, partnership was launched as a major M MSU, Michigan State University Initiative in 2016 and evolved to become a consortium of 10 universities, MSU and nine African universities in October 2018. I wish this could happen with the University of Montpellier. UP has invited to join the, the, this partnership because of its leadership in research for impact on the African continent. Most recently, the collaboration between UP and MSU, Michigan State University, expanded through AAP to through these partnership programs, such as the African Futures Research Leadership Program, a postdoc program that targets early career female researchers from AA, from this partnership consortium members to be jointly supervised by faculty members from Michigan State University and their own institutions. The fellows also participate in a program at UP's Future Africa Institute. He is the only vice chancellor from South Africa currently serving on the governing board of the Association of African Universities, the leading advocacy organization for higher education in the whole Africa. Headquartered in Accra in Ghana in Western Africa, it has a membership of more than 400 higher education institutions and aims to improve the quality of African higher education. Prof. Coupe's vision for the Africa and for the, this alliance include working to create a favorable policy environment strengthening the institutional capacity of stakeholders, resource mobilization for sustainability, and promoting harmonization and standardization for competitiveness. Prof. Coupe is the first African member of CAIROS, an international non-profit organization that aims to strengthen societies through the innovation transformation, in, through the innovative transformation of education to face the challenge of the 21st century. Accepting the invitation to join has given him the opportunity to engage with like-minded individuals on how to move education into the 21st century using technological advances, especially in Africa. He is a council member and trustee of the Association of Commonwealth Universities, a network of over 500 universities across Commonwealth, committed to coordinating efforts by its member to ensure that tertiary education institutions contribute to achieving the sustainable development goals by 2030. The, this uh, Commonwealth Universities Association is committed to play its part in furthering the sustainable development agenda. Prof. Coupe is a member of the MUSE International Advisory Board, of course. This has been said. Com comprised of key foreign... He is not only a member, as it was said by uh, President Auger, he chaired the meetings of the Montpellier International Advisory Board and even report that on President Macron 
in last May. Comprised of key foreign and French strategic partners to help achieve MUSE goals, the board plays a, co a key consulting role in terms of steering and providing strategic guidance for the development of the MUSE initiative that will be uh, positively assessed probably in, in very soon, I hope. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, to provide the strategic guidance of the development of MUSE initiative and making recommendations in the areas of education, research, and international outreach. He chaired the second and then now the third NIAB meeting, Montpellier International Advisory Board. Uh, we all know that this uh, board will become an official and statutory board of the University of Montpellier. And we feel so proud and so honored that uh, to have Professor Coupe on board. Since his appointment in 2019, Prof. Coupe has enabled the University of Pretoria to participate in various networks and partnerships for building capacity in Africa. He initiated the Africa Global University Partnership to build capacity in Africa and to strengthen the University of Pretoria as a locally relevant, like the T of ICIT for MUSE, Africa-based and globally enabled leading institution on the continent. Key drivers of this strategy are the university's four transdisciplinary research platforms, namely the Future Africa Institute. We were so happy with Francois Pierrot to be part of the, of the launching ceremony. Uh, the Jawet Up Art Center, Innovation Africa at UP, and Engineering 4.0, which all leverage the benefits of transdisciplinary research to address the grand challenges that face Africa and the world. Confronted as we are with the global COVID-19 pandemic, along with climate change, unemployment, poverty, food insecurity, education and economic crisis, Prof. Coupe argues that there is no place for business as usual. He is a strong advocate for sustainability. He is much more than an advocate. He is much more than an advocate. He is playing a leading, visionary and leading role. He is, um, in addition to supporting a climate of collaboration for researchers across early career stages, he champions multi-sectorial partnership and relationship for a future focused on high impact research resulting in policy change and products and services that serve the African continent and beyond, especially towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Prof. Coupe is an active member of several civil society organizations. As I said, is not only advocating including as chairman of the board, the Ama Bungame Center for Investigative Journalism since its inception in 2009. is the chairman of the board of Media Monitoring Africa since 2005 to date, and is the inaugural, inaugural convener of judges for the Discovery Health Journalism Awards. He also serves on the board of a major private company and is an executive member of the International Association of Media and Communication Research. He is a popular media activist, invited speaker and academic expert on issues of media performance on radio, television, the print media and online locally and abroad. He advocates for reimagining the role of higher education institutions for greater societal impact, particularly in the aftermath of the COVID pandemic, and continues to raise awareness about the digital, digital divide and its obstruction of progress towards an equitable and socially just society. Under his leadership, the University of Pretoria is committed to educating students to be socially responsible, active citizens and leaders working for positive change. 
he has promoted the opportunity provided by the COVID-19 pandemic to disrupt, disrupt, let's remember this name, to disrupt and the world as we knew it by finding innovative ways to address poverty, unemployment, and inequality, and strive for social justice. As a result, almost 3,000 UP students, University of Pretoria students, are directly involved in community projects as part of their annual curriculum. On being awarded an honorary doctorate in 2019 from Michigan University, Prof. Coupe was hailed as a visionary educator, and this description still holds. Exemplifying what it means to be a globally engaged citizen, serving local needs with a focus on the most pressing challenges we face across the world, is devoted to innovative university leadership and developing highly educated, well-rounded and skilled professionals for Africa and for the world. I can thus affirm, without any doubt, Prof. Coupe is a visionary person with an exceptional, inspiring charism and an outstanding society commitment. To mention an example among others, as it was already reported, when, Prof, when uh, Emmanuel Macron, uh, President Macron visited South Africa in last May, the speech he made to accelerate the supply in Africa of vaccines against COVID was delivered at the campus Future Africa in Pretoria. Prof Coupe welcomed President Ramaphosa and President Macron, highlighting the role of research and celebrating the partnership with the University of Pretoria. I encourage all of you to watch this video on YouTube as you will all witness the engagement of Professor Coupe. In addition, we at the University of Montpellier share a lot of values together with him and between our universities. One, the conviction that development in Africa and in Europe are highly and tightly connected which leads us to participate to the Africa-France Summit now and to organize the Montpellier Global Days. Two, the need for balance, equitable and sustainable partnership and long-term shared vision between our institutions that rely on strong Africa-based and own agenda. Three, the need for transdisciplinary research to address the society challenges that we face together and from which we can learn from each other. I'm particularly referring to the interconnected challenges, feed, protect, care. Four, the engagement of our university in societal transformation by strengthening education, citizenship, democracy, and collective intelligence. I have personally been working with University of Pretoria colleagues since 1997, just after the end of the apartheid period. Some of them are here today, and I would like to greet them. Trust and confidence are also values that require long-term engagement to emerge. While celebrating Professor Coupe, we have a dream a dream to strengthen even more our partnership beyond and through common projects and initiatives. And this dream may, be, may come true by mutually considering our two universities as a hub to connect with wider communities, as it is the case on your side with Australian universities, and as we already experience it together with the YEBO project funded by the European Commission for internationalizing doctoral studies in South Africa. A dream that, come, that may come true by strengthening the connection of our two universities with special attention between the Future Africa Institute at the University of Pretoria and our European University CHARM. And I'm 
particularly referring to the European, uh, to the connection with Barcelona, Dublin, Utrecht, and Budapest. Uh, and the dream can also lead to uh, a connection uh, between the Macron, our president's speech at La Sorbonne that gave rise to European universities with the speech at the University of Ouagadougou in Burkina Faso to call for strengthening education of the young and next generation. Creating together space, collegiums, institute for advanced studies to, a pro to provide the support to share and make our common values flourish and contaminate the world. With this word, I just, uh, and somehow a lot of emotion, I'd like to uh, share with you how proud and honored I can be to celebrate the exceptional value of Professor Kupé. Thank you so much. of introduction and welcome and Mr. Dean of the Faculty of Medicine and the Vice President for International Affairs, our dear friend Patrick Caron. Uh, I don't speak French, but uh, the, in my house, I have a daughter who's five years old and she goes to the French International School, which is in front of the ambassador's house. And so she's going to teach me French, but it was not in good time for this speech. <laughs> My younger son also did French, but at the British International School, which is quite interesting. <laughs> but uh, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, Montpellier is a university I respect greatly, as I told uh, President Macron. So uh, if I may then uh, deliver my remarks, some of the things uh, where Patrick uh, hugged my computer, so he took some of the paragraphs, so you might hear them again, but in a different voice. President Philippe Auge, President of the University of Montpellier, Dr. Patrick Caron, Vice President, International Affairs, the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, academics at the University of Montpellier, partners of the University of Montpellier, colleagues from South African universities and from the University of Pretoria, and South African research institutions, including the National Research Foundation. A good day, my daughter said I should say bonjour. It is an immense privilege for me to receive this honor from one of the most innovative higher education institutions in the world. Built over eight centuries of academic and scientific tradition and leading the future through its pioneering research. I'd like to express my deep gratitude 
of, for this recognition, which I accept not just pe only personally, but on behalf of the investor of Pretoria, universities in Africa, and I would say indeed the people of Africa. I would also like to warmly congratulate my fellow honoris causa doctoral awardees, Dr. Chipeto Kankasa, I attended a ceremony here yesterday, and Dr. Mukwege, who's also a Nobel Prize winner from the DRC. I won't be able to attend, <clears throat> but I salute him. Thank you for your outstanding examples in modeling the very essence of service-driven leadership in action. The South African government has instituted 2021 as the year of Charlotte Matreke, as we mark what would have been the 150th birthday of a social and political activist who became one of South Africa's first black women university graduates and who was ahead of her times in so many ways. Yosefle's contributions remind me of her words. Uh, uh, open quote, this work is not for yourselves. Kill the spirit of self and do not live lives above your people, but live with them. And if you can rise, bring someone with you. Close quote. I'm extremely grateful for the close relationship which University of Pretoria shares with the University of Montpellier, which dates back to the mid-90s when an institutional agreement with the University of Montpellier II was signed, and later in 2018, as Professor Caron said, when the University of Pretoria became the first university in Southern Africa to be invited to enter into a formal collaboration with Montpellier University de Excellence Muse. What excites me most about this flourishing partnership, because it's a flourishing partnership, is that it is indeed exemplifies a joint vision that stretches far broader than institutional achievement. Together we can pursue work that is not for ourselves, but which can achieve the positive societal change so urgently needed on a global level. It goes without saying that these days we are navigating ongoing disruptions at multiple levels. Climate change, the climate crisis, the COVID pandemic is just, in a, it's just a symptom of larger problems of the disruptions we live and face numerous complexities which are symptomatic of the deep fault lines in the way we live on our planet. These challenges which do not come neatly packaged to fit into silos, boundaries and borders of academic discipline and national borders have required us to rethink, reimagine and reposition our universities and our role in broader society and co-create impactful knowledge for the sustainability of humanity in harmony with the planet. Because I think now we face an existential crisis. If we do not use knowledge to address this existential crisis, the sustainability of humanity is also in total doubt as that of the planet. Transdisciplinary and interdisciplinary research approaches offer the best opportunity to achieve this vision of knowledge-driven, new sustainable features and new ways of doing things. I chaired the board of, of uh, news this afternoon and we received an excellent uh, example of a master's degree shared between six to seven uh, European universities together with, including Montpellier, which shows that it is possible to do academic programs differently that are based on transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary approaches, but that are his ultimate aim is not just academic excellence. The ultimate aim is to change society and to prevent the, ex the existential crisis. So it is possible to change the world. The COVID-19 crisis, which has exacerbated and brought multiple disruptions to the fore, has affected every aspect of life and highlighted the urgent need for these new approaches, which go beyond academic and university collaborations to partnerships with key stakeholders in society, governments, business, and civil society. Universities must move away from being ivory towers, elitist institutions disconnected from society into using knowledge as a connector of all stakeholders in society. That way, again, we prevent the existential crisis, but we create a new and a better world. Muse Consortium of 19 French institutions with Menpolia University at its core, shows how innovative interdisciplinary approaches can deepen knowledge fields 
and boost the contribution of research communities to sustainable and transformed societies. It is a privilege for us to partner with the highest globally ranked institution in ecology, recognized as a thematic research intensive university in agriculture, food, environment, and human health. As University of Pretoria grapples with these very issues within an African context, there is greater effectiveness in international collaboration and partnerships as they enable universities to take significant and research and innovation leaps by building on each other's areas of expertise. We are delighted that our engagement extends to a national level and that, as you heard, we are able to welcome French President Emmanuel Macron to African soil in May this year. He, he was the second uh, European leader to come to, uh, which I hosted. In 2020, before COVID, I hosted uh, uh, the outgoing uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel. And when I discussed with President Macron's team, they said we must make the, the visit better than Angela Merkel's visit. <laughs> and it was better than Angela Merkel's visit, <laughs> although his was also enjoyable. To enjoy discussions, critically important uh, discussion on African COVID vaccine production at our future Africa Institute and campus at our university. This campus, as uh, Patrick said, is one of our four transdisciplinary platforms. I won't repeat what Patrick said. But the idea there is to bring not only in academics from the University of Pretoria, because as you know, in a university, many academics don't know each other, even if they are tackling the same challenge uh, uh, that has many dimensions. Climate change, for example, is not just about climate science. It is also about the social sciences and the humanities and how people ought to live on the planet. So the best way to bring universities together, we believe academics together at the University of Pretoria, is to build transdisciplinary platforms where everybody can come and meet, but also not just to meet as University of Pretoria academics, to bring African colleagues and global colleagues like Montpellier and others. And that way, you create a critical mass and scale of academics globally that can meet together, put their minds together, and produce new knowledge. So it is this response, if you like, to the need for radically different ways of doing things, radically different ways of being relevant and responsive to local and global challenges uh, where we have created these uh, this particular four platforms. The vision is to transform the world through African research excellence and uh, to working together with partners. And this, high, uh, this vibrant hub offers world-class facilities for Africa's leading researchers and scholars, as I said, from across the world, to co-create solutions to positively impact society. I think that universities are very good at saying, we are good in physics. We are the top university in X, Y, Z. But they don't answer the question, what are you good for in society? And I think making that leap, if you like, is going to be what is going to save the world. At the SDG Summit in September 2019, well, leaders call for a decade of action, pledging to mobilize financing, enhance national implementation, and strengthen institutions to achieve the 17 Sustainable Development Goals by the target date, according to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. With the pandemic impeding progress, we now know that the goals were not, 2030 was not a realistic, doesn't look like a realistic date, but the pandemic has also made sure that it might not really be a, a realistic date, but that doesn't mean we should sit back. So what should we do? We need accelerated efforts are needed so that it makes sense that the investor of Pretoria and MUSE are mirrored in their efforts and have strong linkages through sustainability sciences. Since the signing of our Memorandum of Understanding at the Future Africa Institute in Pretoria in 2018, our collaboration has grown we look forward to contributing to MUSE's endeavors to address the globe's three intertwined challenges of promoting innovative agriculture, to contribute to food security, and build sustainable food systems. Two or three of my colleagues leading that project are in the room here. Environmental quality, fostering a transition towards an environmentally friendly society, and improving human health in changing environments. Together, may we feed care for and protect our planet and its people, both for today and for our children. We must be future-oriented 
and future focus all the time. The investors of Pretoria's focus on SDGs is underpinned by various roles, including being a member of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network and through our Albert Lutuli Leadership Institute, hosting the South African SDG Hub, a collection of online and face-to-face -face platforms aimed at linking African policymakers with their most relevant and impactful research and innovation needed to implement the SDGs. In June, the Future Africa Institute and Campus was pro proud to host the African satellite event of the 2021 Sustainability Research and Innovation Congress, a congress which served as a conduit to unite the Global North and the Global South, supporting objectives of Future Earth's global network of scientists, researchers, and innovators to ensure a more sustainable planet. As the objectives of the Future Africa Institute at the University of Pretoria are well aligned with the sustainability goals of Future Earth, it is a prime position to contribute to solutions for issues pertinent to Africa, especially those related to sustainable food systems, security, water, energy, climate change, health challenges, and the impact of COVID-19. And we know Investor of Montpellier is a global leader in these, uh, in these areas. We are excited that our Center for the Advancement of Scholarship was recently accepted as one of the regional hubs for Bridges Sustainability Science Coalition that is supported by UNESCO. The transdisciplinary approach of Bridges is perfectly aligned with the Investor of Pretoria Sustainability approaches and its ambition to be future-oriented, future-focused for transformative futures. Together with our partners, we look forward to strengthening the participation of African countries in sustainability networks. I've mentioned Africa, which is a, a continent we all know a number of times, but I've not yet elaborated on the significance of Africa. Historically, the significance of Africa, if you look at the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, it was a climate, or it was a continent of bad governance, collapsed uh, uh, markets, corruption, lack of democracy, lack of accountability, underdevelopment, and, 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 and lost opportunities. But you know that this has changed over time, but it's still difficult uh, to see uh, Africa's way towards progress. It may sound like a bold statement, but it is true that the future of the world hinges on the future of Africa. There is no, a bad Africa is bad for the world, just like a bad world is bad for the, for the rest of Africa. This is because Africa's population of more than 1.3 billion will double by the middle of this century, potentially rising to 4 billion by 2100, or around one third of the world's population. It is also has the youngest population. Over 70% of the Africans are actually under 35 uh, in terms of age. And so there's a unique opportunity to educate and upskill a generation that can, apart from Africa's own needs, contribute high quality human resources to those regions of the world which have an aging population. So in other words, a, glo a, a, a global society connected by highly skilled and educated people, and not only people uh, with the low level skills. At the University of Pretoria, we've embraced our continental identity as an African university firmly anchored in our locality, South Africa. We are passionate about our continent's unbelievable richness in terms of its people, natural resources, cultures, biodiversity, and environments, and its potential to thrive as a knowledge economy that relies on itself for solutions to its own challenges. We have heard that we have created an African global university framework where we will connect with 30 to 40 universities on the African continent and in the rest of the world to create a, a very strong institution, much in the manner that Montpellier is doing. Africa urgently needs good leaders in every sector with foresight and wisdom, are well-educated and, and well-skilled, active and engaged citizens who understand local and global challenges. We know that the continent is brimming with talent and as potential pathbreakers of the African knowledge society, our youth, if afforded the opportunity to be the best they can, will contribute significantly to innovation and entrepreneurship on the continent, enabling environments and the necessary resources need to be mobilized to allow them to realize their full potential. In Africa, 
investment in education has very, very high yields, in part because the education, the population is not as highly educated as it is in Europe. The number of doctors, the number of engineers, skilled scientists is a low ratio if you compare it uh, to Europe. So, for example, in 2019, there were 46 doctoral graduates per million people in South Africa, which is one-tenth of the figure for Switzerland and the UK and even France. There's much room for growth and capacity development in this area. So, we, so the solution is through knowledge creation, through high-quality university institutions, through transdisciplinary collaborative platforms working together with others to change this uh, situation. Of course, there are considerable obstacles to be, to be overcome in order to unlock the potential of Africa. The African Union Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, envisions a prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development where poverty is eradicated in one generation. This is echoed in the SDGs, but achieving this ambitious goal would require a substantial investment of approximately US 1.4 trillion a year. Given the magnitude of the challenge and the scale of investment needed, it would not be possible for development aid or public spending alone to achieve this. The United Nations therefore articulated a strong appeal for all sectors, including the private and educational sectors, to play a fundamental role. And in doing this, as you know, South Africa is one of the most unequal countries in the world. But it can eradicate that inequality with a highly educated politician, global partnerships at particular levels. And, and as Madame Maklaikes Maxim, if you can rise, bring someone with you, is lived out through individuals committing their time and working lives for the purpose of upliftment. And that perhaps brings us back to an important part of solving these problems. They are too sizable to be dealt with individually. But when tackled collectively, read Montpelier working with the University of Pretoria and other universities, and through partnerships which pool expertise and resources, and foster learning, tangible results become achievable. We must partner, collaborate, engage, connect, based on the values of mutual benefit, respect, and equality in everything we do from code design in research projects like we are doing in MUSE and academic programs to staff and student exchanges and ethically driven policy advocacy using evidence-based sustainability affirming new knowledge. In this way, we address the historical injustices between and within nations and regions of the world, address current challenges, and together co-create new societies for a better, sustainable world. My vision when I was inaugurated as Vice Chancellor for the University of Pretoria was for a university to transform individual lives, but to transform communities and sectors, transform South Africa as a nation and society, transform our continent, and make a significant contribution to changing the world. Today, as I humbly accept this honorary doctorate, may I provide a call through the University of Montpellier to everyone here today to redouble our efforts to build equitable and sustainable partnerships and to extend them broadly to partners in both the global north and the global south, no university, country, or region of the world can do it alone. And this work is certainly not for ourselves, but for every livelihood of our planet and our future generations. Thank you. Merci.
complétée par d'autres ouvrages, donc de Montpellier. C'est un petit peu lourd, mais ce sera, on espère, un beau souvenir pour ça. Merci. Le doyen. C'est tout à fait complété. Une édition spéciale. L'occasion pour un sage d'information. I'm the vice chancellor of the University of Pretoria, president of the university, and uh, I would like my university to be a top high quality university which produces a lot of transformative research. Yes, we are almost similar universities. We are strong in the sciences and in agriculture, environment, and health sciences. So, because we are so similar, we decided that working together is going to produce better and more results to change the world and to create a better planet, sustain the environment, sustain human life and improve health and produce high, excellent, highly qualified graduates. This is a very strong and high quality universities. If you are a student in Montpellier, count your lucky stars. Get a good degree, you are going to be a powerful person who can change French society, but not just French society. You can change Europe and you can change the world and you can make a great contribution to Africa, my continent. <laughs>